Hello guys, it's Mr. E, and today I'll be showing you a relic guide. Um, first off, I'd like to show off that Tornstein up here, uh, he has a reset all relics button. This is how you would be able to get rid of any relics that you decide you don't want anymore. This is simple, this is easy, but you can't remove one or a certain amount of relics at once. You have to remove all of them. So, for example, if I was to go over here and say remove or reset all relics, Yes, please. Boom, they're all gone. No more relics. You have uh, 30 slots to fill up relics, and that's all you get. So make sure you choose wisely as you choose your relics. Now let's go over the relics and what they do and what maybe you should look for. The best place to find relics in this game is probably in Event Horizon and in Event Horizon there is a dungeon in here. This dungeon is literally the best place to find the relics. You're not always gonna find this dungeon. This dungeon doesn't spawn 100% of the time but uh, it does spawn pretty often and when it does you can search for relics if you don't happen to have all of your relic slots full. I recommend farming this in normal or nightmare mode to get your relics. It's not really worth doing in hell mode because in hell mode it requires a specific key to open the dungeon. And on top of that, the mobs are a lot harder to kill, so you might actually die on accident. So I don't recommend actually doing it on hell mode. So once you find this dungeon, you just want to enter. And once you enter this dungeon, you'll see a bunch of mobs to kill. You have the option of picking up relics right here. And then on the next floor, there's also a chance at three to four more relics. So this is where you would go if you want to get free relics. And all it requires is that you have the Wrath of Mebius DLC and or a friend that owns the DLC and then you can join them for free. But yeah. This is where you would go to farm relics. Outside of this, if you really wanted to get relics and you're desperate and you don't want to do any of the grinding, you want it to be absolutely as fast as possible, then I have something for you. What you have to do is go over to Torstein in town. Go to craft. Go to the mining section. You'll find right here at the top left, craft random relic. All it takes is copper. Well, let's say you didn't farm that much copper. You don't want to go out of your way to go farm copper. Copper's in normal mode. That's boring. I don't want to do it. Don't make me. Well, that's fine. You don't have to. You can go over to this section. You can take ruby ore and you can convert it over to copper. Or you can just go into the auction house and spend rubies to buy it off of somebody else. But literally, you just take your, your ruby, you convert it into copper, come over to this section and you say craft a random relic it'll say do you want this one you go no reroll you want this one no reroll you know or yes I want it pick it up so there you go all right guys so here we have the active relics and I'm gonna go down this list pretty quick so make sure you pay attention thousand kg basically drops a weight from the sky and it damages enemies within the zone it's not that great don't use it unless you have nothing better to use Aaron's staff has a chance to heal the player for 25 percent of its health and it goes on a cooldown afterwards so you can't spam it angel staff of apocalypse spawns nearby an explosion by you it's actually quite damaging and can be damaging to bosses i i like this one i'd say it's in my top five Applehead launches the apple into the air, which then shoots projectiles, hitting enemies. It's not that great. It's just, yeah, it does what it's, it says it does. Um, Balalaika. I don't like saying that, so I'm going to call it ukulele. That's what I always call it. Basically, it does strums a tune, which is a kind of funny tune. Then it does an explosion off of your body, like a sound wave, and it hurts the enemies nearby. I kind of like it, but it's not huge bomb sets a bomb that will explode and it triggered is triggered by an enemy 
I don't think that's actually accurate. What happens is it throws out a bomb like Bomberman, and then it blows up over time, like it charges and blows up. Book of Belial. In my opinion, best active relic in the game. Has a small cooldown of like 10 seconds, and then gives you like a huge damage increase for like 2 seconds. So basically every like 8 seconds, you can have a huge damage boost, and I recommend it. Works on every class in the game. Boomerang. Throws out a boomerang, then it comes back, barely does any damage, don't use it. Bouncy. Throws out a spike ball that bounces across the ground in one direction, just like the traps that send out spike balls, but it tends to jump over the enemies too much and miss them. Not that great. Doesn't work good on bosses either. Candy Crusher. Basically just throws out a bunch of candy off of your body that explodes in the area. Not that great, but it's okay early on. Sino Dice. Drops a dice from the sky that does a small explosion on the ground. Not worth picking up ever. The Box. The Box is a relic that is actually kind of nice early on. Because what it is, is you open it and it drops a bunch of random on the ground. It could be a bunch of normal and crystal keys. It could be loot such as mythics and legendaries. It's random kind of. But then once you use it, it disappears. So you can't use it over and over and over again. It's kind of like a miscellaneous relic, but instead it's an active. Darts. Shoots out a ring of darts from the player in different directions. It's kind of like Fan of Knives, if you ask me. It shoots off in like a fan wave. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but if you get surrounded, it could be okay. Delicious Pie. Drops a slice of pie that taunts enemies nearby. Doesn't work all that great, and it doesn't last that long. I don't recommend it. But it can troll your friends if you happen to throw it on the ground around them and say, Hey, what the hell is this pie? They'll like be confused, probably. Um, dislocated Eye slows enemies on the screen. Kind of does like a stun effect, but eh, I don't like it. I don't recommend it. Doggo. Doggo, the relic itself looks kind of like a doge. And what it does is it shoots a rocket into the sky that drops a bunch of meteors to the ground that does AoE. Does decent damage, not really super good against bosses, but decent against clearing onto the screen. I recommend it um, if you're going for a damage relic rather than something that actually boosts your damage. Double Scythe. Throws out a double scythe in front of you in one direction that hits enemies in a line. Does exactly what it says. Um, doesn't do a lot of damage, but you know, it's one of those thrown actives. Dragon Head. Basically is like a small flamethrower for 3.5 seconds that does okay damage. Not really that great. ES Energy. Temporary increasing your energy by 15%. It doesn't last that long, maybe like three seconds or something, but it's not bad for like a mage class to get a boost. Honestly, Book of Belial is 10% better. Why would you ever want that? Flyswatter, literally a troll. Jar of Flies, literally a troll. Never use those two relics. Keygen, basically it gives you the blue screen of death and it says it stuns everything, I don't think it does. Instead, it just stuns you and your party members and will troll everybody. Don't use it unless you want to be a bad person. <laughs> Light Cola basically makes you throw up um, for a few seconds. And if enemies run into the throw up on the ground, it hurts them over time. It's not that great. I don't recommend it. Looter Ring, probably one of the worst active relics in the game because it literally just brings you a random item that dropped on the ground that's within close vicinity and it could be anything so it could be a common it could be a blue it could be a legendary whatever it is it'll just bring you only one and then it goes on a huge cooldown it's pretty much worthless don't pick it up mario's pipe this one is recommended by a huge amount of the player base especially those in hardcore because it allows you to get out of situations where you're surrounded. It allows you to get out of being stuck. So if you get stuck in the structure of the game at all, you can warp out of it. Um, it goes on a, like a 12 to 14 second cooldown though, so it's pretty big cooldown. But uh, a lot of players use this to try to get them out of a sticky situation. 
and that's up to you if you want to use it. Meat Hook basically attaches you to a nearby enemy. I don't know why you'd ever want that, so don't pick it up. Kind of dumb. Ninja Hook grapples an enemy and pulls it to you, kind of like Scorpion. And that sounds like a death wish. Just pulling the enemy straight into your body. That way they can hit you at point blank range. Yeah, sounds dumb. Don't do it. Orb of Chaos basically just unleashes a AOE off your body that is quite large and does some decent damage. Not bad. Orb of Fire drops a Hydra on the ground for 10 seconds that shoots really slowly and does low damage. Not really great. Orb of Ice basically just shoots out a ring of projectiles around your body that can freeze the enemies and slow them. It's not that amazing. Um, it's not bad. Orb of Poison is exactly the same except for all the enemies that get hit get poisoned and take damage over time which is way better than ice. Prop Hunt. Basically used to do nothing. You turn into a prop on the ground and you just sit there. Literally. It's, it's worthless. Don't pick it up. Rainbow Gate. Actually not too bad. It shoots a beam of rainbow light off of your character in a straight line in front of you and goes through all enemies does some pretty decent damage not bad rocket barrage shoots seven homing rockets off of your body towards the nearest enemies doesn't do a lot of damage kind of slow it's okay though rotten apple this one i've used a lot in hardcore to survive a lot further Basically what I would do is activate it and any enemies that are within close vicinity turn into an apple which basically makes them stunned. And when they're stunned you can attack them at point blank range and take no damage while they're in the apple form. It also has a smaller cooldown so it gives you the ability to use it quite often. So I, you can use it all the time and get away with doing point blank damage. It does not work on bosses. Rubber Duck. Literally, you just throw out a bomb that explodes on touch, and it makes a quack sound. It's kind of funny. Satan's Horn basically sets enemies um, on fire for 3.5 seconds, but it does less damage than Satan's Tooth, and Satan's Tooth also stuns, and it's half the time. I recommend Satan's Tooth over this if you want to catch enemies on fire. Shade of Death just stuns enemies that are near you. Not really that great, goes on a huge cooldown, don't recommend it. Shiv is actually pretty decent. Throws multiple, basically, swords in front of you that travel across the land and hurt enemies in its path. Does some pretty big damage, even works good on bosses. Squishy the Suicidal Pit, another worthless relic that was added just to incorporate a game that Panic Arc Studios actually owns, separate from Hero Siege. And what it does is basically Squishy runs out to a different enemy and then once he finds that enemy he drops like a boulder or something from the sky that breaks on their head doesn't do that much damage it's not good uh, Steve's dirty head basically a troll item you activate you pick it up and it just has his head circle around your body and then when you activate it nothing happens it's basically a troll Stickman Steve actually used to be one of the most broken active relics in the game. It used to be able to push bosses across land. It used to do millions of damage by itself. It used to be able to clear like half of the map by itself because it stayed alive for so long. But basically what it does is for like three to four seconds, a stick man character will spawn off of your body, run around in a random pattern trying to home in on enemies, and then he just runs into them. He can also run through walls too, so it helps in zones where there's a bunch of enemies behind a wall. But it's not all that good anymore. They nerfed it. It doesn't do a lot of damage. It's not bad though. Sunflare. Basically, you activate this and it puts down a bunch of beams of light from the sky that hurt enemies within the vicinity. Not a lot of damage, but it's okay when you're surrounded by a ton of mobs. Um, Vadra. This is basically just a spear that you throw out. It goes in a straight path of wherever you pointed and it doesn't do a lot of damage but it will go through enemies and push them back a little bit. I don't use it ever. Winner's Drug, basically the same as ES Energy but less percent. It's only 
And why would you use this when you could totally use uh, Book of Belial, like I said? Basically, not worth it. And then Wizard's Hat. Restores mana on use. If you ever needed this, it would be at the very beginning of the game, because mana regen, mana per hit, like, there's so much chance to get mana back that this becomes super useless, even endgame. So, basically, I, I wouldn't never pick up this, unless it's like the first relic you pick up in the game. Flight Relics. There are six of them in the game, and they each have their own abilities. So, Amputation Kit gives you a 5% attack speed bonus on top of flight. Holy Bible gives you a stamina boost. Monkey King Bar gives you a speed boost. Arcane Boots give energy boost. Golden Fleece gives strength boost. And Shield of Elsid gives an armor boost. You can totally wear all of them at the same time if you want. They have decent bonuses, that's for sure. But technically most people will only wear two to maybe three of them at max because they don't all correlate as well. So for example, maybe you're not going for attack speed build, you're using a class that doesn't use attack speed. That won't really help you that much unless you really just need the flight at the beginning of the game. Um, Maybe you don't care about speed, so Monkey King Bar doesn't really help you at all. But I don't know why you wouldn't want speed. Almost everybody picks this up. Energy. Maybe you're doing a physical class build, so energy wouldn't help you that much. Same goes for strength. Maybe you're playing energy and magic, so strength wouldn't help you that much. And then maybe you're just going pure DPS and you don't want to waste a relic on armor or on health. So those wouldn't help you out that much. So technically, you want one of these, at least one, if you don't plan to have flight on any of your gear. That's what the flight relics are. Movement speed relics. Movement speed relics, there aren't a lot, but here are the ones that you can find. The spoon, very good. I pick it up on almost every build that I make. Not only does it give you 10 movement speed but it gives you a plus one percent to all the main stats which is really nice rock belt some people feel like this is needed for the extra speed i feel like it's not good enough i don't normally pick it up blazing boots it creates a trail of fire behind you and then gives you plus five speed i don't normally pick it up butcher's knife gives you plus five speed one percent strength and then a chance to shoot out a blood surge in front of you that travels across the ground and uh it's decent it's good for a proc build monkey king bar this gives you movement speed and flight and it's a lot of movement speed i normally pick it up just for the movement speed but if it's at the beginning of the game it's really nice because of the flight amazon spear this is something that uh you used to be able to get only through a DLC, but they added that DLC to the main game now, so everybody can find it. It gives you an attack speed buff and a really large speed buff, so I pick it up every time with every class. Phoenix Feather, plus 5 speed, 2% energy. I don't normally pick this up unless I'm playing on a mage build. 7 League Boots. It doesn't tell you what it does, but what it does is it gives you a 10% movement speed buff. So the difference is, everything else is a flat speed buff, this is 10%. So I pick this up with every single class in the game, regardless, 10% is a lot of movement speed. So here we have the attack speed relics. There are quite a bit, and we'll go over it now. Doom Flute, 5% attack speed, very good for a high-end attack speed class. Some people don't pick it up because it's only flat attack speed, but 5% adds up quick, I would recommend it. Numchucks, recommend it for every attack speed build. Storm Dagger, I recommend this for any character that wants attack speed plus a proc. The Storm Dagger procs about 33% of the time, so it's pretty good. Amputation Kit, 5% attack speed and flight, pretty good. 
whip, 5% attack speed, hand scythe, 4% attack speed, light katana, 3% attack speed, dirge, 3% attack speed strength, hell scream axe, it might not be the best for attack speed, but if you're using a character that bases its damage around strength, it also applies a fire burn ability, which is hidden. So even if you're not using strength or attack speed and you want to apply a fire proc, this one's pretty decent. Commander's sword, not so amazing for attack speed, but if you're using a strength character, it pairs well. Razor blade, 3% attack speed. Tequila, really good, especially for a strength character, 5% attack speed. Butterfly knife. It has a hidden ability, so besides 2% attack speed, it also has a 5% crit hit chance. So I picked this up for crit builds as well. Lightning Ball isn't that great for attack speed or strength, but it also has a proc ability where it has a chance to throw out a lightning orb that will travel across the ground and do damage. Amazon Spears, very good for movement speed, has a small attack speed bonus. Old Man's Coffee Mug. Attack speed 3% and has energy. Lost Wand, high attack speed, some energy and some stamina. And Wizard's Mind Bomb. It uh, makes you think that it has a hidden ability, but I don't think it does. So attack speed, stamina, energy. And this is the attack speed relics. So as far as attack speed relics go, I don't normally pick up the ones that have 4% or lower. So I won't take a hand scythe, I won't take razor blade, and I won't take light katana because there's so many good relics in the game and you have a limited amount of spots to fill. But uh, if all you care about is attack speed, then uh, feel free to pick those up. Alright, so these relics right here are the projectile shooting relics or the ones that hover and float around your body as a shield. So, let's go ahead and get started with Demon Sheep. This is something that was added into the game in order to get to Sheeponia back in the day. They took that away and added the Cloud Key, so now it's just a normal sheep that levitates around your body and helps you break random stuff in your way. Bottles, you know, not really that useful. Skull Bat floats around um, behind you, shooting at objects, not good at all. Shredder. It does damage, it floats around you in a circle, um, anything it touches it does damage to. It's not the worst in the world, but I don't like it. Companion or fetus literally just floats around you, breaking stuff just like sheep. The eye follows behind you slowly and shoots things, not that good. Devil Skull actually isn't any of these, it's just an, a passive ability that's on you that shoots orbs in all directions. Not very fast, not very damaging, not worth picking up. Shrunken Head follows behind you and shoots like the rest, not that good. Ancient Rock follows the same way, not that good. Templar Shield, uh, what it does is it helps reflect, so it'll circle around you, and if uh, anything shoots at you and it hits the shield, it'll reflect it back, so that's not too bad. Uh, most people don't use it. The Almighty Fedora follows behind you, shoots objects, really slow, not good. Guardian Angel, um, what it does is it tries to search out a mob close by and keep it away by pushing it. It's not bad, but it's not good. War Zeppelin follows behind you and shoots, no good. Carp Head, this one follows and shoots as well, but it has a hidden ability, which actually makes it very useful. If you are tired of worrying about drowning to death, this is the relic for you. This item, having it on your relic list, keeps you and prevents you from drowning permanently. As long as you haven't died and you have this relic on, you cannot drown. You don't have to worry about watching your gauge ever again. Do I recommend it? Sure, it's a good relic. I use it sometimes. If you can get away with not drowning on an average without it, you don't need it. Minisect follows behind you and shoots. It doesn't do almost any damage, just like the rest. Honeybee follows behind you and throws out like a liquid honey on the ground, and if the mobs run into it, they get slowed 
and take some damage. Not that good. Pickled Brain. It spawns a zombie that follows around with you named Aldo. He doesn't do almost any damage, but he is kind of nice to have around just because he takes a little bit of aggro. I still don't like him though. And Zombie Face. It follows around behind you and it slows enemies that get next to it. Technically, if I was to say, you, sh you shouldn't use any of these. If anything, maybe Carphead just for the convenience, but the rest are trash. I wouldn't pick up any of these. This is like the trash bracket, to be fair. So here we have the proc relics. The proc relics are as listed. Frozen Orb. Frozen Orb has a chance on attack to slow slash freeze the enemy. It's okay. I don't recommend picking it up, but it's okay. Poison Spear has a chance to poison on attack. It's a poison over time effect, so it's pretty decent. Storm Dagger, we mentioned this earlier, but not only does it give attack speed, but it has a 33% chance to strike the enemy with lightning damage. The more attack speed you have, the more it procs, so it's pretty nice. Odin's Sword has a chance to set the ground on fire under an enemy. Not that good, don't recommend it. Ogre Club, it has a hidden attack. Um, basically, it has a chance to stun, and it's like an 18% chance. Unfortunately, it does not work on bosses, so it's decent but it's up to you if you want to pick it up. Titan's Gladius does massive damage even to bosses, but it doesn't proc that often. So it's up to you if you want to pick it up. Basilisk Tooth, its effect says that it has a chance to turn enemies into stone and kill them instantly. I don't notice it working at all. Maybe if you try it, you can tell me if you see it working, but I don't think this actually works. Twin Blade, has a chance on attack to make that attack a crit hit. Um, fire and Ice. Basically, your attacks have a chance to either be cold or fire. Um, I don't think that that works. Razor Wire has a chance to cause bleeding over time effect on attack. Rocket Battery on attack has a chance to shoot out a rocket that hits the enemy, does a decent amount of damage. We talked about Hellscream Max earlier. On attack has a chance to ignite the enemy into flames, burning them over time, pretty decent. Frostmourne has the ability on attack to proc a shockwave that travels in front of it that's cold, not bad. It's a lot like Butcher's Knife that we talked about with the blood shockwave, but it's a cold ice shockwave instead. Um, Death Scythe has a chance on attack to launch skulls off of your body in every direction. It's not great, but it's not bad. Cactus has a unique effect that it doesn't tell you about. Has a chance to spawn a cactus on the enemy, and that enemy takes damage and is stunned for a second. So it's actually really nice for a stun effect. Assassin's Shuriken on attack has a chance to be launched off your body in one direction and it'll fly through all the enemies. It doesn't do a lot of damage, I don't recommend it, but it is a proc. The sun has a chance on attack to unleash a beam from the sky that'll hurt enemies. Just it's, it's actually almost exactly the same as the active relic, but this is on attack, so it's more often. And it's decent, the more attack speed you have, the more it'll proc. The mighty sushi has a chance on attack to unleash a bunch of uh, bombs off your body. It's not really that great because you have to be super close in proximity to the enemy. So unless you're like literally standing on the enemy at all times, I don't recommend it. Razor Leaf has a chance on attack to spread a whirlwind around your body that kind of that goes from close all the way to the outside of the screen in a really fast manner. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it looks cool. Witch Claw on attack has a chance to transform the enemy, not bosses though, into an apple which then stuns them for 3 seconds. It's nice, but it doesn't proc that often. If it procced more, I would say hell yeah, pick this up every time, but it's pretty low proc chance, so I don't tend to pick it up. Shattered Katana 
has a chance on attack to spawn war uh, tornadoes around your body that circle you. They can be really good if you're attacking in close proximity to mobs or trying to run through them to kill them, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. Still cool though. Large Beer. On attack, has a 5% chance to cause you to barf, which if the barf hits the enemy, it does a decent amount of damage, but it's only a 5% chance, so I normally don't pick it up. Small Spiky. I don't know if this is on attack or on hit, but basically there's a chance that a small spike will um, come out and basically like circle around your body for a second. It doesn't do like any damage, so I don't recommend it at all. It's pretty much garbage. Necromancer's finger on attack has a chance to send out a skull. No, sorry. Has a chance to send out a soul off of your body that searches out a target doesn't do that much damage I don't recommend it lightning ball we talked about this on attack has a chance to send out a electrical orb that flies forward and it hurts enemies um, Satan's eye basically has a on attack a chance to spread a fire wave on the ground that shoots out in different what would you call it a cylinder type of direction and it's like five beams it's actually a pretty cool crawl effect proc. Does some decent damage. I wouldn't say it's huge, but it's nice. Um, Holy Grail has a hidden ability. It's also ridiculously good because of the plus two all talents, but basically its hidden ability is on attack, has a chance to smite enemies. So basically you might enter into a room and then you just hear the sound of enemies exploding and dying. For no reason and you're like dude what the heck happened like they all just kind of exploded for no reason like they died and that's because holy grail has a chance to smite so it's really good jungle vial on hit has a chance to poison i honestly don't know what the difference between this and this is they both are like the exact same maybe one is more damp poison than the other but I do know that they stack, so if you want to do poison damage over time, by all means, grab both. Uh, mana Dice. On hit has a chance to give you mana back. If you really are struggling early on, I'd say it's not bad for a mage. But honestly, this is absolute useless. So yeah, I don't recommend Mana Dice unless maybe it's one of your first relics when you first start the game. These relics right here are the relics that proc after getting hit. Instead of you hitting, this is when you get hit. So, Devil's Horn. Devil's Horn can be good. It depends if you're able to play this playstyle though. Basically, if your HP drops to 10% or less, you get a 100% damage buff. But only when it's 10% or less. So might not be too bad if you're planning to take a lot of damage at all times but nobody really wants to die so dropping below 10 percent shouldn't be something you, that you aim for stigma this is also another thing that i don't recommend but if your hp drops to five percent or lower you get a huge health regen buff most of the time you'll be one shot or hit to zero before you'd stop at five percent but that option is there. Dragon Shield. Dragon Shield is on hit. You have a chance to spawn a meteor from the sky that falls randomly on the screen and hurts enemies. I don't ever use it. I don't think it's really that great of damage, but you know, if you're playing a class like the Shield Lancer, this could come in handy if you're standing in the middle of mobs letting them attack you with damage return. Same goes with this. Barbed Shield does damage return um, so if anything is attacking you it'll get some damage back so this might not be bad on a shield lancer helm of chaos helm of chaos is another one where if you drop below 10 percent hp it will send out a shock wave from your body that will knock enemies back i don't think it's that damaging and if you're dropping below 10 percent hp you gotta figure you're probably gonna die anyway Toxic Pendant. Basically, if you take a hit, that enemy has a chance to get poisoned afterwards. It's not bad, but it's not a lot of poison damage, so I don't recommend it. 
Lantern. Out of all of these, this is the most useful one, and I recommend it on every single build, and I'll explain why. There's a 10% chance that when you take a hit, instead of taking a hit, you get 10% of your HP back. So, what this means is, there's a chance that when you get hit, you don't take a hit. It negates it. So it's kind of like saying, I'm going to put up a block shield for a second. And it's a slight chance that this will happen. And when this does happen, it happens at random, but you also get HP out of it. So, in the long run, pick up Lantern. It's basically a get out of jail free card, a chance that you'll negate a hit, and that hit will also give you HP back. It's a win-win, pick it up. So here we have the energy relics. Relics that are all based mainly off of energy focused on all of the mage style classes and any build that might run around mana. Odd Book of Spells, 2% energy. Frostmourne, 2% energy, strength, and has a shock wave. Rusted Dagger, 2% energy. Silver Dagger, 3% energy. Golden Dagger, 4% energy. Old Man's Coffee Mug, 3% attack speed, 3% energy. Damien's Left Eye, 8% energy. Probably the best relic out of all of these energy ones, because that's a lot of energy. Mage's Handbook, 2% stamina, 2% energy. Old Runestone, 2% energy. Lost Wand, 5% attack speed, 1% stamina, 2% energy. Wizard's Mind Bomb, Attack Speed, Stamina, Energy. Phoenix Feather, 5 Speed, 2% Energy. Newt's Tail, 5% Stamina, 1% Energy. Day's Rune, 2% Energy. And I think it has a secret effect where there's like an 8% chance to stun. Don't quote me on it, test it for yourself. I think it does. Magic Sphere. 4% energy and arcane boots 5% energy and the ability to fly these are the energy relics so what's the first thing that you guys notice when you look at the strength relic list that's right there's about double the amount but to be fair there was maybe three four relics back in season 13 that had energy on it it wasn't until recently that uh, they added a whole bunch of new relics with uh, energy on it for season 14 so be happy that we at least have that many i did a lot of complaining over the last couple of seasons and i guess me and a bunch of other people's voices finally got heard and you know they put some more work into the relics so Let's start with Nunchucks. Attack Speed, Strength, Stamina. Skull Axe, 3% Strength. Jeffrey's Subscription, 1% Strength, 5% Stamina. Spirit Skull, 2% Strength. Ogre Club, 2% Strength, 18% Chance to Stun Everything But Bosses. Dirge, 3% Attack Speed, 3% Strength. Hellscream Axe, 1% attack speed, 4% strength, chance to ignite enemies. Frostmourne, 2% strength, 2% energy, ice, shockwave. Commander's Sword, 2% attack speed, 5% strength. Butcher's Knife, 5 speed, 1% strength, blood, shockwave. Death Scythe, 2% strength, chance to spawn skulls that shoot off your body. Rusted Sword, 2% Strength. Silver Sword, 3% Strength. Gold Sword, 4% Strength. Rusted Axe, 1% Strength, 2% Armor. Silver Axe, 2% Strength, 3% Armor. And Golden Axe, 3% Strength, 4% Armor. Highest Relic with Strength on it is Damien's Amulet, 8% Strength, 
which is the complete opposite of Damien's eye, which is 8% energy. Mayo's Old Sock, 2% strength. Tequila, 5% attack speed, 3% strength. The Mighty Sushi, 2% strength, chance to drop bombs around your body that explode. The Player's Dislocated Head, 3% strength, and on kill, has a chance to summon flies that attack the target. Lightning Ball, 1% attack speed, 2% strength, and a chance to spawn lightning orbs that attack off of your body. Satan's Eye, 1% strength, 1% stamina, chance on attack to summon fire that crawls across the ground in a, I don't know, cylinder formation in front of you. And Golden Fleece, 5% strength and the ability to fly. I don't normally pick up anything, like I said, with 2% or less, so I don't pick up like Rusted Axe, I wouldn't pick up Rusted anything, wouldn't pick up Spirit Skull, um, wouldn't pick up Frostmourne probably, wouldn't pick up Mayo's Old Sock, probably wouldn't pick up Lightning Ball, um, wouldn't pick up Satan's Eye, wouldn't pick up Sushi, um, wouldn't pick up Death Scythe or Butcher's Knife. So I typically wouldn't pick up any of those. Sometimes I wouldn't even pick up the 3% ones. The only reason why, like I said, is there's so many slots that you have to be willing to sacrifice some for others. Welcome to the stamina page, where all of your needs for health are answered. So, let's start with nunchucks, 1% stamina. And that's it. Jeffrey's subscription, 5% stamina. Sausage, 2% stamina. Cake, 3% stamina. Cookies and milk, 2% stamina. Probably not enough health for Santa. Might want to up that health, that stamina intake. The Holy Bible, 5% stamina. Gives flight. Rusted ring, 2% stamina. Silver ring, 3% stamina. Golden ring, 4% stamina. Cheeseburger, 4% stamina. Half eaten mochi, 2% stamina. And gives more HP from health globes that you pick off the ground. Satan's eye, 1% stamina. Chance to cause a burn trail to shoot off. I've already said this a bunch of times. Mage's Handbook, 2% Stamina. Lost Wand, 1% Stamina. Wizard's Mind Bomb, 2% Stamina. Newt Tail, 5% Stamina. And Mantle of Arthas, 4% Stamina. Normally I don't pick up the health stuff unless I'm trying to boost my HP overall. And when I do, I usually only pick up 5% and 4% stuff at max. Anything 3% and less I don't normally pick up unless I'm going for like another build that has attack speed or strength or energy or something else, maybe armor. But it's up to you. If you're building into a huge HP pool, here you go. These are the ones to choose. So here are the armor relics. There are not that many in game. So if you decide to boost your overall damage reduction with armor or just your armor stat in general, which gives damage reduction, I should say, these are what you would want. Damned Buckler, 3% armor. Rusted, 2% armor. Silver, 3% armor. Golden Axe, 4% armor. Rusted armor, 2% armor. Silver armor, 3% armor. Golden armor, 4% armor. Shield of Elsid, 5% armor and flight. And Mantle of Arthas, 4% stamina, 4% armor. There are not a lot of armor relics, but whenever I pick them up, I usually pick up 4% and that's it. 4%, 5%. So I normally don't pick up these first three, it's really up to you what you want to do though.
All right, guys, we have the last section, and I'm going to call this miscellaneous. So what we have is Spectral Arrow. Spectral Arrow gives you the ability for your auto attacks projectile to go through walls and objects. I don't think that it works on everything, though. This is for you to find out on your own, but it's mainly for ranged projectiles. So, for example, bows and guns and magic not all can do it but a fair amount can so if you want to shoot through objects this is the relic for you magic mushroom plus one all talents and a random stat gets boosted that's basically it a random stat will get boosted by how much that's not important no, mostly people just pick it for the all talents charmed blood it says life steal, but what it means is every kill will grant you 2% life back. Bracer of Life gives health regen. It's a very small amount, not worth ever picking up. Maybe if you're really early in the game, like let's say you started, you're like level 5 and you're struggling to kill monsters and you find this, sure, pick it up. Token of Luck, very huge. Magic Find is a huge deal in this game. It improves the drop rate and the quality of your drop rate. So if you want really high ticket items to drop in the game, you need Magic Find, Token of Luck, 200%. Take it, pick it up, keep it with you. Skeleton Key. Picking this up will give you 99 normal keys. And as once you pick it up, the relic will disappear off your list. So there's no reason not pick it up. Golden Cube. Golden Cube will give you 3% of every stat, so Strength, Stamina, Armor, and Energy. Same goes for Triforce. It's exactly the same. Razor Headset. It's a passive that will just randomly throw a bunch of music notes off your body, and if it hits anything nearby, it'll damage them. Not worth picking up ever. Rice and Chopsticks. It's a very questionable relic. It has the ability to disarm an enemy or boss. So basically, for example, if you're attacking a boss and the boss is about to cast a skill, there's a chance it will cancel his skill. I have been told by a lot of other players that run high-end wormholes, like 2,000 to 5,000 wormhole, that it doesn't seem to come in handy at all. It doesn't stop the bosses from casting very often, if at all. So I'm kind of questioning it whether or not it's worth picking up. I guess you can pick it up and figure it out for yourself, but I have seen it work. It is a thing, and uh, it's up to you if you want to use it. Bonsai Tree, another plus three all stat item. Magnet, very good. Has the ability to pull in gold, keys, and rubies off the map from a distance from your character, so it's really nice. I recommend it, especially since um, season 15 is going to have a huge benefit to having a lot of gold. Homing Shot. This will make all of your ranged home in on the target. However, it does not stack with Spectral Arrow. So if you're going to use Homing Shot, don't pick up Spectral Arrow. If you're going to use Spectral Arrow, don't pick up Homing Shot. These two do not correlate. The Holy Grail, plus two all talents and has the ability to smite foes, meaning on attack there's a chance it'll insta-kill an enemy in the room. Horned Mask, 100% will always want this relic unless you're just pushing wormholes only. Why? What it does is it turns all statues in the game into a positive statue. So. That being said, instead of getting like a curse or a negative effect from touching like a demon shrine, it'll always give you a positive one, which means you'll always have buffs at all times as long as you're running into statues. Lottery Ticket. What does this do? Lottery Ticket will always give you 2500 flat gold. So pick it up every time, regardless, you'll get gold and the ticket will disappear as soon as you pick it up. So, worth it. Hand of Midas. This just increases the amount of gold that's dropped off of mobs. Might be very valuable to you, might not be valuable at all. Depends what you want with it. Oversized. 
I recommend picking this up on every single class. What does it do? It makes your abilities and your projectiles twice as big. And that means twice the coverage. Um, it also will increase your damage overall too. It might not look like it does, but it does. It increases your overall damage. It's worth always having. Daddy's Keychain. This gives you a handful of normal keys and crystal keys, and then it just disappears off of your relics list after you pick it up. Always worth picking. Fortune Card. It says that it has the luck of the draw, but what it does is a couple different things. It summons an event. So the event can be you get a couple keys at random, like normal and crystal. You get a couple items, like mythics and legendaries or something. Or, it also can summon a boss directly wherever you're at. So let's say you are rolling relics in town, which is a thing. And you open, or you pick this up, there's a chance it'll spawn a boss in town and attack anybody in town. So it'll attack you. We'll attack your friend, whoever's in town. So be wary when you're picking this up, you might spawn a boss. Last but not least, Metal Detector. What does it do? Metal Detector will basically guide you to the ore in the map. As soon as you get into the zone, if there's any ore in the map, it will put a little arrow next to your body and point in the direction that the ore is. So once you get to where you can mine Ruby in general, you can uh, then get some more jade ore out of mining it. So basically it ups the, the chance of you finding jade ore. Um, very, very great if you want to be a miner in this game. And there you have it, guys. That is all the relics, what they do, what you need. It, it's really dependent on your build. So the rest is up to you. I hope this helped you guys got anything out of it if you enjoyed the video if you want to see more make sure you subscribe to the channel thank you guys and i'll see you on the next video